In this unit we're going to take a look at view scales. Now just before we get into the detail of this I just want to start with a very important concept and that is that everything that you model and detail in Revit is always done at full size or full scale one to one. So if you take this very simple model I have here, I'll just switch to 3D view just to show you that. So four walls, a door and some windows. Go back to a plan Let's take the set of doors for example and if I just get the ruler tool and we just measure across that opening you can see that is 1810, 1810mm so I cancel out of the measuring tool go to um, let's say the south elevation again let's just take the for example the height of the wall in this case they've been modelled at 3 metres high, 3,000 millimetres and finally the window 1210 high by well, I think it, it's actually 1810 wide if I it's probably picking up a little bit of the um, the brick course in there so the point of this is that everything is modelled and if you, in the case of detailing which you're going to come on to at the end of the course drawn at full size regardless of what scale you want your final views to be put onto the sheets at so um, we'll see how we may want some plans at 1 to 50 1 to 100 we might want a site plan at 1 to 2 500 for example um, everything is still modeled in the system in the database at 1 to 1 once we've built the model and we've detailed it, then we change the scale on a purview basis to suit the output we need. For the purposes of this demonstration, let's say that we finish modeling our project and we're now in a position where we want to start setting the view scales for our various views. So if we look over in the project browser, we've got some example views set up here. So for a floor plan we've got a GA plan, general arrangement plan, a furniture plan and a setting out plan. We've got a basic 3D and a number of elevations. The scale of each view is a property of the view itself. So let's start off with let's say this GA floor plan. So we make that the active view. So over in the properties palette if you look at the parameters here, view scale currently set to 1 to 100 you can click in there and you have a drop down list of available standard scales you can switch between. You can also look down on the view control menu here at the bottom of the view. Remember everything that you find on this little menu here at the bottom of the view is view specific. Any changes you make to these parameters or these toggles will only affect this current view. So you can see by that logic, the, the view scale out the front 1 to 100, changing it here is only going to affect this particular view, this level 0 underscore GA plan floor plan view. So it's currently set to 1 to 100. Let's drop this to 1 to 200. Now you may have noticed that the annotations i.e. the door and the window numbers look like they've increased in size they haven't really they've stayed the same size it's just the model has changed scale behind it I'll discuss the uh, relationship between the scale of the model and the scale of the annotations a little later in this unit just want you to note for now that if you want to change the scale of a particular view you change it either down here on the view control bar or in the views properties both does the same thing and you can see when we changed it there the corresponding value comes up in the properties palette so let's just do that with a, a couple of other view types so let's go to that default 3d view that's set to 1 to 100 at the moment let's drop that to 1 to 50 nothing immediately jumps out at you when we make that change however if this view was placed on a sheet you would see that that change accordingly I'm going to do that now just to uh, to show you how that works so I've got a single sheet in this project 
sheet number A100. Let's switch to the sheet there. There's nothing on it at the moment. Let's go and pop that setting out plan, that floor plan view, onto this sheet. So drag and drop. So if I just switch to the view itself, that view is currently set to 1 to 100. So that is what a 1 to 100 floor plan view of the model looks like on this drawing sheet. Let's go back to that setting out plan view and switch it to a different scale. Let's say 1 to 200. And now go back to our drawing sheet. As you may expect, the actual floor plan has changed in scale and now is a lot smaller when placed onto that sheet. In this part of the unit, I want to talk about the relationship between the model elements and annotation elements. Now, for those of you transitioning or coming from AutoCAD into Revit, how AutoCAD works is quite often you will put your annotation, i.e. your text items, um, in the model space. And there's normally a lot of debate about where text should be placed in AutoCAD. Does it go in model space? Does it go in paper space? Um, if, it, if you put it in model space, you... Um, end up with solutions like creating different text at different real world sizes so that when you scale the viewport it comes out correctly. If you're not coming from AutoCAD, please don't worry about what I'm talking about right now. This doesn't affect how Revit works, but in AutoCAD, I think it's fair to say it's quite a cumbersome and convoluted process in getting your text and your annotations to scale correctly because you've got to almost do sort of workarounds to make that happen. In Revit, you haven't got to worry about that at all. Because it is a, a building information modeling uh, software or tool, Revit knows the difference between your model elements, i.e. the things that you actually want to build on site, and annotation elements, things that are just used to annotate and document your, your drawings. So let's show you that by example. Keep with our, our simple building model. Let's put a piece of text on. So I'm going to go with 7mm aerial text. Now in the next module, in module 8, I'm going to show you all about detailing and annotating, so how these tools work. But for now, I just want to place a little bit of text. Let's put test text on there. Another point worth noting related to this is in Revit, it's a good idea to put all your annotations and your text on the views themselves. You don't really want to be placing your views onto sheets and then placing your text directly over the top on the sheet. All your text notes and your annotations should go on each appropriate view. So you're creating a GA plan, put all your notes to do with that on the view itself in here then when you're ready you can place that view wholesale complete with all its notes and annotations onto a sheet so just place that test text on here as we saw that piece of text is seven mil high now because Revit knows the difference between the model elements and the annotation elements it will always keep that seven mil text at seven mil when it's printed out regardless of what scale the view is set to. So at the moment it's 1 to 200. So let's go and create a new sheet. Pop that in there, A101. Let's drop that GA plan onto that sheet. So there it is. Now if I get the measuring tool and measure in the sheet view, you can see that that text is seven mil high. I'm measuring in, I suppose, what's the equivalent of paper space because I'm measuring on top of the sheet here. But we've just seen how the underlying model is set to be displayed at one to 200. So let's just go back to that view for a second. 
Now let's change the scale of this view to 1 to 100. It looks like the text has shrunk in size. It hasn't. It's you, What you're seeing is the differential in sizes now between a 1 to 100 uh, scale of the model and 7 mil high text. So let's go back to that sheet A101. Need to just reposition the, the view on the sheet again. So we're in what is really, I suppose, the equivalent of paper space. If you were comparing it to AutoCAD, let's go back to our measuring tool. That text is still 7 mil high. But now the model appears twice the size because it's now at 1 to 100. So you can see from that quick demonstration how Revit automatically handles the correct uh, display, if you like, of the scale of the model versus the annotation elements you've chosen. So in this case, 7 mil high text. And you can go at any point and change the scale on a per view basis and Revit will handle that difference between the two sorts of elements automatically. It makes it really easy to quickly add the annotations you need to each view without having to worry about different text sizes depending on what scale you want each view or viewport to, uh, to be set at. You may have noticed as I've been placing the views onto sheets, this element down here, this is called the view title bar, comes in by default with each view, tells us the view name, also tells us the current scale that that view is set at. So if you remember from the setting out plan, I'll just activate that view. We set that at 1 to 200. Remember, we can set that from here or we can set it from the view properties over in the properties palette. So that parameter, that value of 1 to 200 is held against the particular view so that when it comes onto a sheet, Revit can automatically populate that value of 1 to 200 into the view title bar. Later on in the course, I'll talk a lot more about placing views onto sheets. And at that point, I'll cover this view title bar in detail. We can look at how we can manipulate it and change its visibility, etc. I just want to say a little bit about Revit title block families and how they relate to views and particularly view scales. So a Revit title block family is shown here. So what some people might call the drawing sheet. So you can see if I select that, the whole element highlights or is selected. That is a title block family. So it contains the boundary of the drawing sheet, whatever size you want. And in your Revit template, you're probably going to have a number of these title block families for the different paper sizes you use. You may have different uh, title blocks here laid out differently depending on the paper size. You can change those, edit them, create your own using the family editor in Revit. So here is my title block family. You can see it contains your company logo, um, a little bit about the project, the client, the drawing title, for example. But just wanted to show you that one of those parameters, again, is the view scale. We've just seen how Revit can populate the view title bar. So remember, this view title bar comes in against each particular view. So we could have multiple views placed on this sheet. Each would have its own title bar and it would display the scale of each particular view underneath there. If all the views have the same scale on a particular sheet, so let's say we've got um, four different floor plans all at 1 to 200, then Revit will automatically populate your title block family with 1 to 200 as the scale. If you have at least one view which has a different scale from the others, so we could have a number of views all at 1 to 200, except for, let's say, an elevation at 1 to 100, Revit will now put as indicated in that scale box there. It won't list out all the different scales uh, in there. It will just put as indicated, and it will be for the 
the reader of the information to look at the drawing and actually see what each scale is for each particular view. So in this unit we've seen how we can change the scale of a view on a view by view basis. We've seen how we can change the scale of a view once it's been placed on a sheet. To finish off this unit I just want to show you the effects of changing that scale once it's on a sheet in relation to the size of the viewport and what it does and the positioning on the sheet. Um, so here's our GA plan. This is currently set to 1 to 100. Remember the view control bar down here. These are all view specific commands. So change the scale there or in the properties palette. I've got a sheet here, A100. Just going to drop that GA plan onto that sheet. Now it's warning us it's already on A101. So I'm just going to quickly go to A101. Delete it off there. Remember that from an earlier unit, we said that each view can only be allocated to one sheet. So that was a really good example there, how I tried to allocate it to A100 and Revit said, no, you've already put it on A101. So now I can go back to A100 and drag and drop the GA plan onto there. So remember the view title bar down at the bottom automatically picked up the view name and the view scale. So let's go back to the GA plan and change that scale to, let's say one to 200. Go back to A100 sheet and notice how the view title bar is too long really. It, it doesn't auto adjust the length of the, the line of the view title bar once you've changed the scale. When you first put the view onto the sheet, it will match the length of that line with the size of the view, but it won't retrospectively change that if you change the scale. So you can go and alter that yourself with the grip, or you can just delete it off the sheet, drag it on again. Obviously the view title bar is recreated at the right size. And if we change the scale, let's say to one to 50, for the view and now go back to A100. We might need to zoom out to find the extents of the view and now go down and you can see this particular view just about fits on at 1 to 50 onto this title block and from there we would have to move the view title bar. Let's we'll say later on in the course I will cover placing views on the sheet specifically. We'll look at that in a little bit more detail. Um, we'll also cover this view title bar in a lot more detail, show you how to adapt that, how to move it, how to turn off its visibility, etc. And that completes this unit. To get the most out of this training material, please take the complete course online at bimscape.com. Here you will find a complete learning management system that allows you to work through the course at your own pace. Comprehensive written tutorials provide additional information to that found in the training videos. Mark each unit as complete as you finish it and move on to the next. At any point you can return to any of the units you have previously completed to go over the material again. If you'd like to take this course online, please visit www.bimscape.com forward slash Revit for details.